AI is a radically transformative technology. It has the potential to impact society as much as the wheel did 6,000 years ago, as much as the Industrial Revolution did with mills, as batteries, assembly lines, automobiles, the phone, <laughs> and most recently, the internet. Today, there are companies putting AI into everything, from self-driving cars to medical diagnosis, from emails to marketing, from warehouses to our homes, in our door locks and our country borders, for good and for worse. Soon, it's going to be able to think with us, think about us, and think for us. It'll transform our world in ways we can't imagine, someplace noticeable and loud, and someplace quietly and ever so thinly. And we need to prepare for this, both as individuals and as a society. I want to introduce you to the basics of AI before I share an approach that I think is going to help us through this next transformation. To oversimplify, if you build a database with enough data in it, and algorithmically categorize that information into these things are recipes, these things are songs, these things are legal documents, and then you reverse engineer that algorithm, you can create those things from scratch. I'm going to get a little bit more technical, so stick with me. Um, if you build a database, uh, you'll have heard about these things called large language models or LLMs. And if you build this database as big as you can, a large corpus of text, you start scraping the internet of that text. Everything from the classics and Wikipedia, but also things like Amazon reviews and the comments on YouTube and Reddit. Take all of that information and use that as a foundation. You then start mapping that information to what it says and how you think about it, and you take those graphical maps and you start rating them against the correctness of what you think they are. Oh, and by the way, we've thrown away that bottom layer. Now we're just thinking about the maps. The final layer on top of all of that is what we call fine tuning, where we start adding humanity to those databases and start measuring the appropriateness of those responses. Sounds super simple, right? Well, the complexity in all those models is why you sort of hear us talk about black boxes. Once we extrapolate a meaning from those layers, combine, recombine the layers, throw away the other text, look at the maps, look at the outcomes, you can't trace any of the original information back to those texts. Large language models are really good at finding the most probable word in a sequence or the most favorable outcome from a tiny prompt. The ultimate goal is to generate accurate and useful responses from questions from a, for a wide range of solutions. LLMs are prediction machines. They just predict a user's desired outcome. And prediction machines aren't new, really. We've been living with prediction machines for years. Oracles define strategies for whole civilizations, sometimes positively and sometimes negatively. Astrology and the stars have guided many leaders' decisions. Tarot cards help us navigate our life and important decisions. Dating apps, they predict the health of a relationship. They hope they get it right. And credit, your choice of your car, your choice of your employment, that will affect your insurance because that has a probability of how much you may or may not have an accident. So AIs are super-powered prediction machines. And over the next few years, you'll find AIs in nearly every part of our life. I currently work at Alexa, building an AI that lives in many people's homes. My team has been designing Alexa's responses to behave more human. My role as a designer is to help infuse Alexa with a personality that is considerate, trustworthy, and playful. What kind of Alexa do we want? The ultimate assistant who never jokes, does exactly what you want it to do before you've even thought about it, whose goal is efficiency. Or maybe a companion, someone who's always there for you, never sleeps, listens to everything you tell it, 24 hours a day, heard all of your problems, <laughs> and listens without judgment. Or maybe something that's appropriate and unique as you are. In the office, we wrestle with big questions like, does everyone have their own AI, 
Or is there one AI to rule them all? What happens when human goals conflict with the designed AI goals? How do we distinguish between a stranger attempting to break into your home or an enumerated family member fumbling with their phone and their brand new smart lock? We speak about these large learning models as if they have intelligence, what it knows, what it believes, what it thinks, when in fact, they're just looking at patterns. It's not really thinking at all. Like I said, it's just a database. It doesn't understand, it's just ones and zeros. Generative AI is the computer version of imagination. Oh, it also hallucinates. This is when a model will produce an output and then argue with you that that output is true. The sky is green. Trump's still in power. The Blazers are definitely in the playoffs. <laughs> this model is not aware of any universal truth. It doesn't understand facts. In fact, it has no concept of right and wrong at all. They're just words in a sequence that have rated really highly with its own training and feels right. We're living in systems that we don't understand. AI is a technology issue, but it's also a deeply human one. Over the years, I've seen two approaches that help humanity place themselves in these large technology shifts. Across the world, for thousands of years, the original seers, shamans, deep thinkers, innovators, used a range of tools and technologies to predict and understand the universe both the seen, but also the unseen. Some might call them mystics. They understood the physical and the non-physical world through their own experiences. They connected knowledge through emotion. They threw rocks into a stream just to see the ripples. They climbed mountains, fasted, to meditate on the point of it all. Mystics uncovered insights through awareness and feelings, connecting all humans to each other and the wider universe. These subjective experiences were untransferable, but they opened windows for everyone else to understand things for themselves. They called, they created strategies for living. As time passed, these practices were dismissed as too emotional, impossible to be accurately written down, and a more rational alternative flourished in the West in the late Middle Ages, a sort of practice known as alchemy, which led to modern science in many ways. Unlike mysticism, alchemists eliminated emotion. They deciphered and defined component parts, separating them from the subjective human experience. While the mystic tries to bring transparency to unknown subjects, alchemists capture their knowledge and put it on shelves. Their texts are instruction manuals but their purpose was often to raise the author's own status as the keeper of the knowledge. Mystical approaches understand that while not everything can be known, widening one's awareness through experience is knowledge. The connection with the wider system around us is more valuable than the individual component parts on their own. And in a world full of AI, maybe we could use more of the mystic. AI will be the next big technology transformation. But right now, at this moment, we have an opportunity to shape our future. We may only get this moment, and we don't want to miss it. So in a world transformed by AI, how can we ensure that we're working to protect our humanity? The only way for us to try and understand the unknowable is to dip our toe in the water and feel those ripples. Don't let fear hold you back. Know what AI can do for you. And like all good mystics, experience it for yourself. I'm going to leave you with one thought as we navigate this shift. Embrace your inner mystic. Experience is a potent form of knowledge gathering. It gives us clarity and awareness to retain our humanity in the face of radical transformation. Thank you. <laughs>